And have you got your agricultural manual with you? Well, then you'll have to believe me. It's good to be here tonight and to thank you for everything that you've done and for inviting us here. This morning early I was praying and I'm saying, Lord, what must I speak to these precious people about? I'm a farmer. I come from South Africa. And I think um, I preach about faith. That is my message normally. And the father of faith is Abraham. But for me, the most important man in the Bible when it comes to faith is a farmer from Israel by the name of Job. Job, the book of Job has influenced me more than any other book in the Bible. Now they tell me, I don't know, I'm not a Bible student, but they tell me that Job could be maybe the oldest book in the Bible. But it's an incredible story about a man who went through hardship. And uh, you know, it's funny, the music team, even tonight, was singing in a different vein. I don't know if you noticed that. And last night when we sang the national anthem, Robert, and I mean this from my heart, I sensed a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, obviously victory, but coming through that anthem makes me want to cry. And then I think of the people of Israel and what they have suffered and gone through for the last 2,000 years. If there's one thing that agriculture has taught me, and that is perseverance. Uh, you don't just put a crop in the ground and expect it to grow. You have to work on it. If we look in the Word of God at Psalm 34 and verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him from them all. Can I have an amen, please? Amen! So as children of God, we suffer, but God always comes through for us in the end. I've never met a man in my life or a woman who are worth their salt who have not suffered. I've never met one yet. It comes through trial and tribulation. Paul knew about suffering. He said in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, I rejoice in my tribulation. Because tribulation worketh patience, patience character, and character hope. Can I have a clap, please? Thank you, Lord. What I see in the Israeli nation, I see character, I see perseverance, and I see hope. And that's why I'm going home tonight to tell my people in South Africa that there are a people who will refuse to give up, who refuse to take no for an answer. And that's who I'm speaking to tonight. And we need to do that. We need to go back to our people and say that there are an ancient people of God who have walked the talk. And I just want to tell you it's a great privilege and an honor for me to be engrafted into the vine of Israel. And I think you can say the same. Come on, let's give the Lord a big amen. Right. Job was a farmer. He was a righteous man. He was the most righteous man in the Middle East. He was the richest farmer in the Middle East, Job. Job had everything. And God allowed the devil to take the whole lot from him. How are you tonight? Where is it with you tonight? How do you feel in your life tonight? You know, we're very good at putting on a mask, aren't we? And saying, praise the Lord and hallelujah and everybody's smiling. But back at the ranch... The wheels are coming off. And I want to leave you with this tonight because I want to pray for you before we leave for South Africa. And I want to tell you we've got to be real with each other and we've got to be real with God. If you want God to bless this nation, you have got to be real. If there's one thing agriculture has taught me is patience. You put the crop in the ground, but God makes it grow. And sometimes we get arrogant and we think we're so big and we're so good because we produced a great crop. But in the meantime, it was Jesus working through the men of God that has brought the crop. We need a crop in this nation. We spoke about finances just now. It's going to come through God only. It won't, it won't be sustainable through men. It's only God. And I've learned that. It's taken me 40 years to learn that. God will not fail you if you will stand up for him. 
You know, Job, when everything was taken away from him, he was left in the, sitting on the ash heap in town full of boils from the top of his head down to the tip of his toes. He was the laughing stock of town. You know that his own wife even said to him, why don't you curse God and die? One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Job chapter 13, verse 15. Even though he slay me, yet will I still trust him. Can you say that tonight? Can, do you believe that? Even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There's no time for fair weather Christians. Either we're in or we're out. Either we're going for it or we're not going for it. I want to ask you tonight, to be honest, because I'm going to be short, because my wife said to me, don't be late. I've got the kettle boiling. The tea is ready. As much as I love you, there's one person I love just a little bit more. Her name is Jill. But folks, seriously, tonight, I just want to leave you with this thought. Suffering. Suffering is not easy at the time. But I want to tell you, it brings out the best in a person. Sometimes the best crops that I've ever reaped are crops that have been grown in a time of drought. You see, when, it, when, when there's good weather and the rain is falling and everybody's got a good crop, the price goes down. See? See, Robert? But when you're a good farmer, see, and there's no rain and you're a praying man, then you can get a bumper price for a medium crop and you'll make more money than you'll ever make in a good season. Can I have an amen? You know, I'm a bit of a, yeah, well, I've, I've given everything to God. When we have a drought in our country, I come up to the, to, to the robot, okay, and I park my car there and the lights are red and some farmer comes to me and says, hey, Angus, he winds his window down. We got no rain. Ask the man upstairs to send us rain. <laughs> now he says that because he doesn't know how to ask the man upstairs how to send rain. First of all, I don't like the way he speaks about my God. But I understand he's desperate. I said, yeah, I'll pray. And you know, every single time God has honored his word. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. Now, I'm not talking about a figment of my imagination. I'm talking about a real person who's more real than you sitting in that chair. Amen. Come on, man. Let's get a, give him a big amen. I think some of you are tired here tonight. Paul, uh, um, Paul suffered more than anybody else, I think, in the Bible. But I want to tell you one thing about Job. Job was a man that continued. God will bless you if you humble yourself before him. The one thing that the Lord cannot handle is pride. Pride and arrogance is something that God resists. The Bible says that he gives grace to the humble. Okay? But he will reject the proud. When you are proud, God will bring you down. Not man, God. He humbled me, sir. He put me on my knees. I want to tell you something. I was an arrogant man. Self-made man. I started with nothing. I had to leave everything in Zambia. Take a truck and trailer and take my young family down to South Africa. Across the mighty Zambezi River on a pontoon. And the Rhodesian bush war was on at the moment. And they were fighting from both sides. I was 26 years old. And when I got to South Africa, I said, I'll show them. I'll do it again. But you see, I never knew God in those days. I knew about him. I never knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I think through the suffering and through the hardship, that is why your people are so resilient. Because they understand what it means to call on God, otherwise we will perish. And so I started, and I worked 24, almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's nothing else to do. We had no water. We had no telephone. We had no lights. The, we were the laughing stock in the district. The local people said they'll be gone in six months. They're living like um, wild people in the bush. And then I met with God. My life was transformed overnight on the 18th of February, 1979. My wife saw what was happening to me. 
I couldn't sleep. You know what happens when you can't sleep, gentlemen? You just keep working and working and working and working. I went to see my doctor. He said, I'm going to give you some tablets. I said, what are these? I said, are these uh, antidepressants? Because, you know, I come from the old school. Only women take antidepressants. <laughs> Not men. <laughs> There's one guy. He's going to be the first one to repent tonight. <laughs> the first one. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you about Israel. I'm telling you about the Jews. I'm telling you about what God told me this morning. Job, you need to read the book of Job. Job had some comforters, didn't he? Oh, huh? oh yeah, Job's comforters. I want to tell you something now. When something goes wrong in your life, you've got all kinds of people coming and saying to you, there must be sin in your life, my friend. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe you're not uh, spending enough time with God. Because it can't be anything else. I want to tell you, we all suffer. There's one person suffered more than anybody else that the world has ever seen. His name is Jesus Christ. He suffered. So suffering is not a, a dishonorable thing. But you need the Holy Spirit to help you to cope. Okay, I found that out the hard way. Don't you do that tonight. We don't have that much time left. You want to be used by God to impact this nation. You have to be strong. You have to be resilient. And you have to know God. Amen. And how do you get to know God? By spending time with God. That's right. And so the time came, I gave my life to Christ. I turned around completely. They couldn't believe it. People would come to my house to drink alcohol. I was a very sociable man. And all of a sudden I was offering them Coca-Cola and Pepsi and Fanta. <laughs> you know, I lost my friends overnight. <laughs> yes, that's a fact. Overnight. Job's comforters. But then I met some real friends. And then my life started to be transformed. I want to tell you one story and then I'm going to finish. That's all I've got to say. God will never disappoint you. If you put your trust in him, he will never. I think this nation is the best example. He will never disappoint you if you put your trust in, in him. Not in yourself. In him. I think I had, uh, it was a day before Passover, and everybody was winding down in the district, and we pay all our staff, and they can go, and it's a holiday. And that particular day, the wind was blowing like a tornado. I had no equipment. I just started farming. I had a beautiful crop of maize in, and right next door to me was a big timber company, had millions of dollars of mature pine trees. And my right-hand man, he's probably my best friend in South Africa, Simeon Bengu, he's a Zulu. He is illiterate. I am half illiterate. <laughs> so we make a good team. Probably the strongest man I've ever met. We fell that whole farm with a felling axe, not with a chainsaw. We couldn't afford a chainsaw, sir. And I said to him, I want you to burn some fire breaks down alongside the forest. The grass was green. So there was no problem, but a wind came up, and that fire jumped into some brushwood. The brushwood was felled, it was old, it was about nine foot high, and a roaring inferno started on the boundary of my farm. And it was threatening to jump over the fence and go into the forest. If it had gone into the forest, I would have left with my shirt on only, because they would have taken me to the cleaners. I phoned all my neighbors. They came running. Farmers are good friends. Farmers stick together because it's a tough life. They surrounded that fire. They couldn't put it out. It was too big. It was too hot. You couldn't get within 20 meters of it. And they held that fire for about five or six hours. Now listen up. Listen carefully now. Now I knew what was going to happen. By 11 o'clock, they started coming to me. Angus, I'm sorry, man. We have to go. We've got to pay our staff tomorrow. It's Good Friday, as we call it. That's, that's a Passover, right? We have to, and I'm saying, please don't go, man. If this fire jumps, I'm done. I guess we've got to go. You know, I did something that I'll never forget. It comes through hardship and it comes through suffering, sir. It comes through when you've got no other game plan. I was working alongside my Zulu workers, tractor drivers. 
I had known the Lord for two weeks. Two weeks. Isn't that wonderful? Be careful, some of us older Christians, that we don't get so clever that we leave the Holy Spirit out and we leave God out because we can make a plan. I had no more plans. So I went and I said to this driver who was working next to me, I said, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'm going to ask him to put the fire out. I'm going to ask him to bring rain now. He he looked at me and I'm going to speak to you in Zulu now. He said, where am I? Gage. Mister, no. I said, why? He said, because there's no clouds in the sky. It's not the rainy season. The wind is blowing from the wrong way. The wind must come from the south and there must be clouds. I said, you will see, I'm going to pray. You see, when you're desperate, like Job was desperate, like the people of Israel are desperate. That's why God's coming on. Don't worry. You'll see. But don't forget to give him the glory, sir. That's a very important thing. I'm preaching to the converted here, but it's important. You know, humility is a big thing for the Lord. You know, Jesus washed his disciples' feet on the night that he was betrayed. The very man that sold him for 30 pieces of silver, he washed his feet, madam. Could you do that? I don't know if I could do that. And then he said, go and do what you have to do. So I got on my knees in front of all my neighbors. They weren't Christians. They were rough guys. Farmers are tough men. I got on my knees in front of all of them on purpose. My driver was right over here. We're beating the fire out. And I said, Lord, I gave my life to you because I can't do it anymore. Now, Lord, I know that you're real. And I know that you're a miracle-working God. Lord, I'm going to ask you right now to bring rain to put this fire out. We can't do it. My neighbors are leaving. I'll ask this in Jesus' name. I got up, and this is no word of a lie. You know, (laughs) the Israeli people here tonight know that God opened the sea, an ocean. It's called the Red Sea. And a nation walked through. That's not a story. That's fact. Okay, we can go on and on. Is that right, sir? Do you believe that? Of course you do. And I do. That's, that's the only reason you're here. That's the only reason I'm here too. And so, they looked at me, and I'm telling you, my girl, out of a clear sky, I heard a shot of lightning, shook like that, and then I heard thunder, do, 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 out of a clear sky. I looked at my driver, his eyes were like saucers. His knees were shaking. And I'm telling you, the wind died down, it turned around, and within half an hour, there's a cool breeze coming up from the south, and gentle, gentle drizzle started to fall on that fire. And it rained for two days, it put the fire out. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of all of them. If you will humble yourself, And if you will pray, and if you will believe. Well, I want to finish up with this. The next day, my wife went to church. I stayed on the farm. I took my little tractor. I had a 44-gallon drum on the back. It was supposed to be my firefighter. And I drove around that that, that fire, and I wept, and I cried. That was the first miracle in my life. And I haven't got any time to tell you about the other ones. I'll just tell you that one. And we we go back now to the gospel, the book, of Job, and we see, and you can read it at home, at the end of his life, God restored everything that Job lost 200%. He doubled the the goats that he had, he doubled the sheep, he doubled the cattle, he doubled everything. He gave him a new family. His daughters were the most beautiful women in the whole of Israel. And the Bible says he lived to 140 years old. That's almost double the life of of, of Israel. And he he was happy, and he was at peace. Even though he slay me. Yet while I still trust him. There's no place in this world for fair weather Christians. A fair weather Christian is a Christian that will serve God when things are going well. But when things don't go well, turn his back on God. God's got no time for that, sir. I want to say to you this evening, as I close, I want to pray for you. Is that okay? Yeah. My last prayer for you. I really want to pray for you. You need to understand that you will go through affliction. 
The preacher that tells you, come to Jesus and all your problems will be over, I can't find that scripture in this book. <laughs> because it's not in this book. It's not about that. We all suffer. The rain falls on the righteous and the rain falls on the unrighteous. Correct? So we need to say, Lord, as we say in Zulu, no makanjani zolandela wen. Come what may, I will serve you. And that is the lesson I've learned this week from this beautiful country, which I'm coming back to in a couple of months' time, is that these men will not take no for an answer. It's only God and His way. Can we give the Lord a clap, please? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you come up, uh, please, Albert? I just want to pray for the people. Is that okay? And then I'm done. Come up. I want to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I know. Why? Because this morning early I was praying for you. I said, Lord, what must I tell these people? He said, tell them that even though they're suffering, it will only be for a season. We're suffering in South Africa. We don't have any answers, madam, but we know Jesus has the answer. And I tell you what, the hardest place to be is when you are prospering and to still remember God. Jack Dempsey, Jack Dempsey was a legend in America. He was a heavyweight boxing champion. He started with nothing. He said, when I was sleeping on the concrete, it was easy for me to get up at half past three in the morning and start training. But when I became the heavyweight boxing champion of the world and I had a silk dressing gown, and I slept in a feathered down bed. He said it was very hard to get up in the morning at half past three. I'm not saying that we've got to lose anything. What I'm saying is we've got to understand that when we serve God, we take the rough with the smooth. But we know one thing. At the end of the day, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. Thank you very much. I, I would like to pray for you. Only if you want me to, I would like you to stand up. I would like to pray that, 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 that tonight when you leave this place, you will not be afraid of hardship. You will not be afraid of things that are not going your way. You will not feel that God has abandoned you. You will not stop praying and fasting and tithing and supporting ministry because times are hard. That's the time to do it. I want to tell you something now, sir. I have found in my ministry one genuine miracle equals a thousand sermons. Because no one can dispute what happened. Would you like to pray with me, please? I'd like you to pray after me if that's okay. Are you ready, Albert? Are you with me? Well, don't stand so far back. Come a bit closer. <laughs> Albert, I'm going to get on my knees. I don't know if you'd like to do the same. I don't know if you'd like to do the same. Right. Father, please pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for Israel. Thank you for the land of Israel. Thank you, Lord, that irrespective of what happens in the future, we know one thing for sure. You will never leave us and you will never forsake us. I pray tonight, Holy Spirit, that you'll give us courage that you'll give us strength to be able to run the race. Especially, Lord, when the going gets tough. And we thank you that ultimately we have the victory. Because you, Lord, are the Lord of all. And especially the Lord of Israel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. And we will see you again in Jerusalem.